What's going on, everyone? I, uh, I, man, a lot of times I sit around and I, I want to make videos for y'all. I want to like, okay, what, what can I really, I want to say, think outside the box type stuff. And it's the things I think about, right? I've always talked to y'all that rarely does my attention go to like techniques and all these things. You know, a lot of these techniques and a lot of these ways people catch fish, I don't think about them very much. I really don't. I don't think about them because um, they're, for the most part, somewhat simple. And what I mean by that is, all you have to do is go out there and try them and practice them, right? And you can start getting, it's the only way to figure out a technique, right? It's the only really way is to go out there and actually like start doing it. You probably won't be good at it the very first time, things like that, but you'll figure it out. Now the problem I have with all these techniques and all these things that people do is I can go show you tons of techniques and you still never catch a fish on it. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. One is maybe you're never throwing by a fish, right? So you're not throwing by fish, so that's a problem. And two is, is maybe you're not doing the technique at the right time of the year, the right spot, the right area, the right leg, the right, um, the right depth, all these different things. And so to me, so much is, is set on the technique, but the technique is like 5% of like the big picture type stuff, if that makes sense. So I, I'm going to go into this kind of different way of thinking about all this, all these questions I get. Okay. I get a ton of comments and questions from really good fishermen too. Like from a lot of people, and I think they get kind of caught up in looking at, at the wrong thing. And they got they get caught up in like overanalyzing things maybe. And I'm here to maybe go, okay, let's let's put some things back in perspective. Just something to think about. And and this is going to be my first one. Now I had a video in mind before I was gonna go do this. And I'm gonna get to this video eventually. Um, it's going to be about the map and where fish are on the map and all these there's a ton there's a ton. I don't watch them I just I click on them for like 10 seconds and and I'm like I, I'm I'm just I'm not shocked by them but I'm going it, it sounds good it sounds good and I'm not saying they're wrong but I don't want you to get pigeonholed into thinking this is this is the only way to go okay so I will get to that one, but I think that one's a little bit more complex. I'm gonna get to a really basic one. This is a really basic one, but I think I think it's important. I think it's just something for you to think about. I even got a, a text message the other day going, hey man, what are the fish doing on Rayburn? And that's where it got me thinking. I was like, whoa, whoa. Like, I don't even know how to answer that because I've been out there and, and I, I kind of know what fish are doing but I can't give you a simple answer over a text. I mean, I can't even give you a simple answer over a video. There, there's too much. And surprisingly, and LiveScope's helping this, I'm realizing that fish are doing all kinds of stupid stuff. All kinds of, I've realized that with LiveScope from day one of LiveScope. Fish are doing all the things we ever thought about what fish do, we've all been wrong. I've been saying we've been wrong before LiveScope. I've always just been like, man, I don't think, I don't think these people actually know what's going on under, underneath the water. And I think LiveScope has proven that. Now, let's let's dial it down even simpler than that. I I get a question asked all the time about color, like, like, hey, what what color do I need to throw? And I go, uh, I, what? I don't even know how. Pick a color. Pick a color. And they're like, yeah, yeah, but, but like, what were you throwing? I'll get co-anglers. I'll get, I, I get all the times. Like, like, let's just break it down real simple into like soft plastics, okay? Just soft plastic baits. Like, what color do I need to throw? Because I have, I have been on every spectrum of the fact that it doesn't matter to where guys are like, hey, look, it has to be this green pumpkin red with a little bit of blue flake on one side and it has and I'm like huh it it has to be that color but yeah it has to be that color now are colors 
better than other colors at times? Yes, I'll, I'll go as far as that. But I, here's the one thing I want you to think about. This is the one thing I want you to think about, okay? Let me show you the colors I have in my, in my box. All right, this is my Rage Bug color. Crawdaddies, white, I don't even know, blue craw. There's more blue craw. I got Delta Red, Blue Crawl Red Flake, Blue Crawl Red Flake. What, what else I got? More Crawl Daddies. I'm not even. I do like Blue Crawl. I, but more Blue Crawl. Green Pumpkins. Now what do I got in here? Bama Crawl. Like I got a bunch of colors in there. I've caught fish on all of them. I still have to throw a color. I start narrowing down colors though. You can see, I got a lot of blue crawl in there. If y'all seen a lot of my videos, I throw blue crawl a lot. It seems to work everywhere. I throw it, but I don't, I don't say you have to throw that color though. It's just a color that, like I said, when, when I don't know, and I'm like, I don't want to think about it. I'm like, let's just put blue crawl on there. It should work. Now, why are all those colors important? I have tons of them. I have tons of different colors and stuff like that. And yes, I do get caught up on colors. Totally a confidence thing though. Here's what I wanna say. I'm, I'm a guy who at times, uh, we just had a tournament on Rayburn, I didn't fish it. Uh, there's a couple reasons I don't wanna fish this tournament. Uh, I don't think it's worth it for the money. I don't think it's worth it. Like I've got other bigger tournaments coming on and I don't wanna sit there and, and, and I just know what happens at some of these tournaments and I'm like, I'm not wasting spots fish showing people stuff like not gonna happen right and I had my my son's basketball game that I had to coach so there's that reason too but I did look at the results and now I probably look at the results different than everyone else but I always tell people this right so I looked at the results and there was I don't know was there two there might have been 200 people that fished it it was an individual event and I looked at I looked at how many people caught them now you go down the list right 150 people caught fish. 150 people, just on the boater side, caught fish. It was a, it was a boater co-angler, right? 150 boaters caught fish. I don't know how many co-anglers. I didn't look. I didn't check out the co-angler side. So just say, let's just say, at least 100 co-anglers caught a fish. 250 people caught fish that day on the lake. There's a good chance of the 250 people that caught fish, I would say of those 250, what, maybe maybe at any point in time, 10 people were throwing the same bait in the same color. I, that, that's stretching it. I don't even know if it would be that. There's a good chance that out of 250 people, 200 people or 200 fish got caught on a bait that's different. Now, whether it's a different bait or the same bait of a different color, right there's no doubt that there was people catching fish on a jig um, catching fish on a Carolina rig catching fish on a worm uh, catching fish on a Cinco dragging dragging something and you're telling me all these people threw the same exact color there's no way there's absolutely there, like I know for a fact there's no way and so when people say hey what's the best color you need this color I'm like okay well what about the other hundred and we're talking like, remember, I just said there was at least a fish caught that way. Some of these guys caught 15, 20 fish that day. All I'm saying is there's no way all those fish bit the same color. And I know I'm going to get people on here, you know, talking about this or that, or man, one day I was out there. Listen, I know there's exceptions to every rule. And that's what I'm saying. Like you're going to bring up an exception to a rule. Right, where it's like, well, this one day, if you weren't throwing this color and another guy was in the boat, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I understand that happens. But there were still a whole bunch of other people on the lake that day that caught fish. Like I said, I know there's certain colors better than others at times. And I'm not, I'm not disputing that. There's always something maybe better at that specific time, right? Now, there's also 5,000 colors in the, in the world. Trying to figure out that one exact color out of those 5,000s at that one specific time is hard. Why do I bring all this up? 
a lot of times people are so worried about the color and getting confidence in the color and thinking, oh, I'm not getting bit because of the color. And I'm not, all I'm saying is, is maybe you should take in all the other factors that have to, that are involved with catching a fish. And I bet you color is very low on that. Now, I'm not saying I don't look at colors a certain way, right? I always tell everyone, you know, when picking out baits or doing these things, and a lot of times they might be like, well, you're sponsored by this company or this or that. I'm like, well, I, I, I do have to throw a color. I do have to throw a bait. So like, oh, you're just throwing a 6XD because it's a, it's a Strike King bait. Well, I mean, I do have to throw a crankbait that goes 15, 18 foot. Like I have to, I have to pick one. And over the years, my 6XD has proven it's worthy of that, right? And I do have to throw a color in that 6XD, right? So I have to pick at least one color that day to throw or that cast to throw. Now I can switch colors up, but I still, I still can only throw one color, right? On that one cast. The same thing with the soft plastic, right? I still have to throw a color. So I'm still gonna, I'm gonna pick colors. And a lot of times I pick colors because like I just have confidence in them. But I will never tell you, oh, it has to be this color. I'll tell you what I'm throwing. But but rarely do I say, oh, you have to throw this color. Because I don't know. That and one of the beauties of like working with Strike King and designing stuff is I have some of my most favorite colors and baits. I don't want to call them mistakes. But a lot of times in the design business, we get colors we don't ask for. We just get colors kind of thrown to us going, they're more worried about the bait than the color. And a lot of those, mis I wouldn't call them mistakes, but they just kind of made something. And I have to go throw it and I catch a bunch of fish. I'm like, that's not what I would have picked. And it's shown me over the years, it's like, okay, well, just because what's in my head I think is right, isn't always right. And so, yes, colors can matter. But once again, I think bass will hit a whole bunch of different colors. So I just wanted to share that. I'm going to go over a bunch of these things to think about when you're fishing. I don't want you to overanalyze them. I just want you to take them into consideration going, yeah, he's got a point. There was a tournament today. There's a whole bunch of people on the water. A whole bunch of people caught fish. And I doubt they were throwing the same color I was. So maybe I shouldn't be worried about color as much as maybe I should be worried about a whole bunch of other things. I don't know. Something for y'all guys to think about. I want y'all to use this more, right? I want you to all think about things more in a in a way that might be like, okay, maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking about the wrong things. Maybe I'm taking I'm putting too much emphasis on this, and maybe I should be putting more emphasis on other things that might might have a bigger impact of why you are or aren't catching fish, right? All right. See you guys.